Imagine you've released your app in the United States and it's an instant hit. Tons of users, rave reviews, the works. You're now feeling confident enough to release your app worldwide. But when you do, the feedback you get isn't nearly as positive as you expected. What gives? Join us as we try to get to the bottom of this on this episode of Route 85. So what happened and what could you have done to prevent it? It's quite simple, actually. Many users prefer apps in their native language. In order for your app to succeed in non-English speaking countries, you need to localize it. The more languages you support, the bigger your potential target population gets. If you didn't do the initial prep work required for localizing your app from the start, this may take some time and is prone to errors. But if you spend just a little bit of time preparing your app for localization from the start, you'll save yourself a lot of time in the future. Not yet convinced it's worth the extra effort? Let me show you just how easy it is to add support for localization if you plan it right and do it from the start. Let's go over a few key rules. One, add NSLocalize string to any string, and I mean any string, that's displayed to your users. And yes, that even includes that OK button text on that alert. This doesn't require you to provide the actual translations in any language. Just wrap the text with NSLocalize string, preparing it to be translated to various languages in the future. Two, Make sure to add support for localization right from the start. This will save you time and prevent potential errors as you move forward with localizing your app. If you don't do this from the start and then find yourself wanting to add localization to your app, you'll find yourself going over your code, searching for strings, and wrapping them with NSLocalize string. There's a relatively high probability of missing something or adding localization to something that shouldn't be localized, like a file name, for example. So save yourself the extra wasted time down the line and localize all of your strings from the start. Three, always set text displayed to the user via code. Try to avoid setting the text in Interface Builder, even if it's a text that doesn't change throughout the entire life cycle of the app, like the OK button text on that alert. These texts and all others should be set via code so they can be easier to localize. Four, there's no need to worry about the actual translations at this point, and that's what makes this process so painless. You're just preparing the app to be easily localized in the future. You'll have enough time to worry about the actual translations later. Sounds easy, right? Told you. So this is how you used to set your labels text via code. This is how you'll do it now. The method takes two values. One is the key. For now, we'll simply use the string that we actually want to be presented to the user. The other is a comment. Many developers tend to ignore the comment parameter. They either leave it blank or use the same value as the key. This is not the right way to treat this parameter. The truth is that it's almost as important as the key and you should give it the attention it deserves. The goal of the comment is to provide the translator with all of the context he or she needs in order to translate the key string in the best possible way. This comment is all that the translator will know about the string and may improve the quality of the localized version of your app. It's a shame not to use it properly. When your app is ready to be translated, meaning all of the strings are set via code and use NSLocalized string, there are several ways of generating the strings file for translation. We'll use this terminal script. This will locate all uses of NSLocalized string throughout the code and will generate the strings file, which you'll be able to send to the translator. The file will be made out of sections like this, one for each relevant string. The comment is actually the value you provided for the comment parameter of NSLocalized string. As you can see, this is the only context the translator has about where or when the string is displayed so that it may affect the translation. It's even more important if the string can be interpreted in more than one way. On the left side of the equation, you'll see the key. Unless you do anything else, this is what will be displayed to the user. The right side of the equation contains the translation for this string. This is what the translator would change to the actual translation of the key in the relevant language. The file you get back from the translator should contain translations for all of the strings in the same structure and in only one language per file. If you want to support multiple languages, which you're very encouraged to do, you need to have one file for each supported language. So now that you have one or more localization files for the different languages you want your app to support, what do you do with them? Good question. All localization files should be named localizable.strings. The way we can tell them apart is by the folder they'll be placed in. For English, the folder name will be en.lproj. For Spanish, it'll be es. And for Chinese, it'll be zh. You probably get the point by now. The folder name should be the two-letter representation of the language you want to support, followed by .lproj. Testing different localizations is pretty straightforward. Once you added the various localization files and their folders to your Xcode target, run the app on your device, or on the simulator if you prefer, and change the device's language by going to Settings, General, Language and Region, iPhone Language, and selecting the language you want to test. Just make sure that you remember how to change the language back once you're done testing. 
reading the menu options is slightly harder when they're written in a language you don't understand. So now you know how to add basic support for localization to your app. But what more do you need to do in order to make sure users from different countries or cultures are getting the most out of your app? What if the same word in English should be translated to different words in different scenarios in other languages? Are there other ways to generate the strings files? Great questions. Join us on the next episode of Ruid85 for more localization tips and tricks. Until then, I'm Ronnie Rosen. Thanks for watching.